Let's go! Exploding cigar time! Dude, the United States government tried to kill him. How many times was it? 300 or 600? Someone said over 600 failed assassination attempts. I'm saying it. I want to watch another Dentavious video. Dude loves his icebergs. When you think of assassins, you probably think of cool guys in black suits who are calm and collected in the face of danger, like James Bond or Agent 47. But it turns out they're mostly a bunch of idiots, just like the rest of us. I'm Dan Tavius. How you doing? And today we're talking about some doing? of the stupidest assassination attempts in history. Now, guys, I realize that making light of somebody's attempted murder is a little tasteless but i guarantee that by the end of this video you're going to be laughing at some of these schmucks oh and if you like what you see consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more content like this but let's get this intro over with and jump right into this mother sucker now, I don't know if you guys are students of history or not, but back in the 1930s and 40s, the country of Germany was controlled by a group of people known as the Nazis. And I'm gonna spare you the details, but all you need to know about these guys is that they were not too fond of Jewish people. One of the most powerful people in the Nazi party in the late 30s was a man by the name of Reinhard Heydrich. He was the third highest ranking official in Germany after Adolf himself and Heinrich Himmler. And today he's most well known as being the architect of the Holocaust. Heydrich was the one who actually laid the groundwork for the systematic eradication of Jews and other groups. I mean, this guy was a real schmuck. Now, in 1939, <laughs> Germany took control of Czechoslovakia, and after taking power in the area, they appointed a sort of governor to maintain order and keep- Damn, he said the S word, bro, chill. Yo, he's got, he's got daggers for the Nazis, man. <laughs> a real schmuck. The locals in line. A fella named Konstantin Nurath. But apparently Konstantin was a little bit too lenient on the Czechoslovakians, and that's when Heydrich was appointed as governor of the region in 1941, where he was tasked with, quote, strengthening policy and carrying out countermeasures against resistance. And he was very effective at this. In fact, he was so brutally efficient that he gained the nickname the Butcher of Prague. Man, we gotta stop giving evil people such cool nicknames. But anyways, oh, his success right. gave him a false sense of security to the point where he would drive his oh, car with the top down man. with no armed escort. And while Heydrich was being an absolute putz in Czechoslovakia, England was cooking up a plan to take him out. British intelligence worked with a small team of Czech soldiers on a plan to assassinate Heydrich in Prague. But the results of this would be something straight out of a Mel Brooks movie. On May 27, 1942, at 10.30 a.m., Reinhard Heydrich was making his daily commute from his home to the local SS headquarters. Rare British Giga W? I mean, dude, we're talking World War II. They got a lot. Like, it's like some of the few. Some of the few Ws they got. Two soldiers, Jan Kubis and Joseph Gopchik, positioned themselves near a wide turn in the road where Heydrich would be forced to slow down. So, right on schedule, as his Mercedes is coming up on the turn, Reinhard's chauffeur slows down to about 5 miles an hour, and he's basically a sitting duck at this point. Gopchik then jumps out of the bushes armed with a Sten submachine gun and opens fire on the vehicle. Easy dub, right? Or at least it would have been, except for the fact that his gun jammed, so Gopchik was stuck sitting there like a schlemiel looking at his target dead in the eye while presumably soiling himself from every orifice. And the thing is, his gun didn't jam because of a malfunction or anything like that. It jammed because this guy had been picking up vegetables for his pet rabbit and kept them in the same coat pocket as the disassembled machine gun. And he didn't realize that the vegetable matter had gotten inside the gun and jammed it. Once Heydrich realized what was going on, he pulled out his pistol and pointed it right at Joseph Gopchik. So now the tables have turned against him. He blew a 3-1 lead and he was fucked. Or so you would think. Apparently Heydrich's gun wasn't even loaded. So these two schmucks were sitting there staring at each other in what has to be the dumbest Mexican standoff in history. And instead of stepping on the gas and trying to get his boss to safety, Heydrich's chauffeur stopped the car completely, which gave the perfect opportunity for the other soldier, Jan Kubis, to finally finish off Heydrich with a grenade. Except, this is a slapstick buddy comedy, so of course the grenade missed its target. Now, the grenade actually did land close enough- Bro, what was happening? This, girl, this guy had the reverse final destination. He was like, it's not my moment. It's not my opportunity. It's not my time to go. The fuck? 
to Reinhardt to do some damage, and it didn't kill him, but it did injure him pretty badly. At this point, the two Czech soldiers finally realized just how incompetent they were and decided to dip the fuck out of there. Cubis escaped on a bicycle that he somehow found, and Gobchik ran away on foot. But he was being chased. That's insane, bro. Yeah, he, he rolled a nat 20 every time, dude. He rolled a nat 20 over and over again. He just kept rolling them. He's down by the show. Yes, true evil never dies. This is yet another fucking example of this. Like, I mean, look no further than the, the Henry Kissingers and the Dick Cheneys of the world. These motherfuckers never die, no matter what. Fur, who was quickly gaining on him. At some point during the chase, Gobchik finally got a light bulb moment. He realized that he had another gun on him the whole time and shot the chauffeur in the kneecap and escaped. Now, despite being pretty banged up, it's said that Reinhard Heydrich would have survived this incident had he not been the most unpopular person in the entire country of Czechoslovakia. <laughs> you see, nobody wanted to transport this guy to a hospital, so by the time he finally arrived at a hospital, it was too late. His wounds were too far gone. Kubis and Gobchik were eventually <laughs> found holed up in a safe house with a few other soldiers, but unfortunately, they passed away after a lengthy gunfight with the SS. You gotta give it to them. They weren't the most skilled soldiers, but they successfully whacked one of the most powerful people in Europe despite everything possible going wrong. You know, it just goes to show you don't Yeah, he rolled a he rolled an at 20, but he had no stats in charisma. He could not persuade a single fucking person. He rolled a nat 20 every single moment for every single other aspect of his escape. You don't need talent. You don't need skill. You don't even need luck. All you need is perseverance and you'll eventually get the job done. But hey man, these two guys look like masterminds compared to the next person we're going to talk about. But first, a word from our glorious sponsor, Atlas VPN. Guys, while doing research for this video, I started getting paranoid that the FBI agent who's tracking my computer might think it's weird that I'm I'll talking show you about his... a good freaking deal. Oh, and if you don't like it, which is highly unlikely, then they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. So guys, please check out Atlas VPN, the most scrumptious VPN on the market right now, and thank you to Atlas for sponsoring this video. Anyways, let's get back. Some of these ads are also silly to watch because it's like, it's been a year, you know what I mean? He probably doesn't even have that fucking campaign anymore, especially if it... Thank you. Back to it. He survived the attack, but he died because of an infection, quite possibly from a horse hair on the car seat. Wait, what? Really? In the late 2000s, Al-Qaeda was plotting the elimination of Saudi Arabia's Deputy Minister of Interior, Mohammed bin Nayef. For years, Nayef had been building up Saudi Arabia's counterterrorism program and was very effective at fighting terrorism in the region. For these reasons, Al-Qaeda decided that he had to go. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they were having a mid-off. <laughs> Prior to 2009, there had been two attempts on Nayef's life from which he escaped with no injuries. But on August 27, 2009, AQ would carry out their shittiest assassination attempt to date. The plan was simple. They would send in an agent under the guise as a well-wisher to visit Nayef on Ramadan as is tradition in Saudi. Once the fake well-wisher was in range, he would detonate a bomb which would take them both out, and then he gets his 72 virgins and a terrorist of the month plaque over at Al-Qaeda HQ. The agent carrying out the attack was 23-year-old Abdullah al-Asri. Now, the hard part was they needed to figure out where they could hide the bomb. Security was tight at this event, so they needed to be really... His ass. They hid in his ass. Turns out the pat-down they Shut gave him wasn't thorough enough. Fuck up. Yo, dude. Oh my Fanel god. Now Asri was able to smuggle one pound of C4 in his tukish. After almost a whole day of waiting, Asri was finally able to gain an audience with Nayef, <laughs> who, by the way, was also the crown prince of Saudi at the time. Anyways, once Al Asri was in range, he used the cell phone to detonate the bomb clenched between his cheeks and blew up himself only. Mohammed bin Nayef escaped the scene with only minor injuries, and he was quoted as saying, he surprised me by blowing up. Bro, I swear, <laughs> this is not real life. This is like... Uh, this person says his stepdad. I know the story. My stepdad was a CEO chairman of ExxonMobil in the Arab region. The grenade wasn't close enough. The grenade wasn't close enough because his body took it. Yeah, I mean, the issue I think is that he shoved it too far down, right? So all you get at that point is just basically... It's like diving on top of a grenade. It's literally like... Throw in your fucking... Yeah, literal Euler in the chat, by the way. 
Where are those fucking gift subs at, Euler? Talk about explosive diarrhea. Like a family guy gag. So yeah, it turns out he probably needed a lot more C4 because his body basically contained the explosion. But the human anus can only hold so much. I mean, Chatter's dad is a climate criminal. What do you want him to do, bro? He's his fucking stepfather. Or rather, the father that stepped up. What's he supposed to do? Be like, mom, don't fucking date dad anymore. Fuck you. Yeah, what do you want me to do, bro? Kill him? Like, what the fuck? Chatters would be like, do the right thing. <laughs> Shove a grenade in your butt right now. Go hug your stepdad. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Chatters' dads are also like working at fucking Wall Street. It's like, what do you, what do you want? I mean, you can technically store two raccoons in your ass, but that's besides the point. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Let's move on. Oh. Louis Philippe I was the king of France for a brief period in the mid 1800s. He was pretty popular at the beginning of his reign, but his popularity quickly began to decline after some old tweets of his resurfaced. By the third or fourth year of his reign, France was in a terrible economic recession, and if I know one thing about the French, it's that these mother suckers love a good overthrow of the government. There were many people who wanted to whack Louis around this time, one of which was Giuseppe you, Marco Fieschi. Gazelle. Giuseppe joined together with a group of conspirators and they immediately began setting in motion the plot to assassinate the king. Their original thought was to simply go up to him and shoot him at close range. But after careful consideration, they decided that was too risky. After all, not French enough. Oh, they would be surrounded by people, and back then there was a very high chance that the gun would jam. Knowing they only had one chance at whacking Louis, they devised the most. Who's this guy? Want to follow him? Uh, this is a video called "The Dumbest Assassination Plot in History" by Dan Tavius. Stupidly ingenious plan. Tape a bunch of guns together. Yes, as ridiculous as it sounds, <laughs> they created a device that would fire 25 guns simultaneously. <laughs> what the fuck? With those kinds of numbers, it would be practically impossible not to hit him. Well, you know what they say. If it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. On July 28th, 1835, the Juice Man's big day would finally come. King Louis Philippe was crossing the street with his convoy, and Giuseppe was positioned on a balcony directly above the king. As soon as he was in his sights, he fired 400 rounds of pure lead at the convoy, killing 18 people and injuring 22 others. But you know who wasn't injured? The no. fucking king. This dude literally hit everybody except for the guy <laughs> he came there to murder. King Louis escaped with nothing more than a scratch on his forehead. In fact, Giuseppe himself suffered worse injuries from four of the guns exploding when they were fired. Then, in true <laughs> French fashion, they cut his head off a week later. Man, somebody put this guy in the Guinness Book of Schlemiel's. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, known today simply as Nero, is known for two things. One, being the fifth emperor of Rome, and two, being... Uh, excuse me, Rome? Question mark? Everybody knows... Rome is fake. Hello? Rome is not real. The first neckbeard in recorded history. Nero is infamous for his cruelty and degeneracy. He had people whacked for little to no reason, he had his way with women and men against their will, and he even allegedly banged his own mom. In 64 AD, it's rumored that he set fire to the Roman capital and blamed Christians for it. Some people believe that the Antichrist mentioned in the book of Revelation is actually referring to Nero. Now, guys, I know they say you're not supposed to speak ill of the dead, but I'm gonna come right out and say it. This guy was a real jerk. In fact, he's descended from a long- At least he didn't call him a schmuck. <laughs> ...line of schmucks and putzes. His oh! uncle was Gaius Caesar, aka spoke Caligula, too soon. a guy that was so batshit insane that he started a war with the ocean and tried to appoint his horse to the Senate. On top of that, he was also pretty evil and sadistic himself. Nero's mother, Agrippina, was only slightly less unhinged than her brother Caligula. Agrippina poisoned her husband and married her uncle Claudius, who had become emperor after Caligula's assassination. Now, despite being the most powerful man in the world, Claudius was an absolute simp, and Agrippina had a considerable amount of influence over him and the empire as a whole. In fact, it's said that she was probably the most powerful woman in the history of Rome. And she mostly used this power to be a dick. 
One of the first things she did after her marriage was kill or imprison all of her potential rivals. She also installed people loyal to her to high ranking positions in the government. You know, it's like I'm always saying, women can plot, scheme, and murder just as well as men if given the chance. No, but seriously, you gotta give her credit. Girl boss. She was a lot smarter and more cunning than most of the it's men called, around. It's called uh, Slay Queen. She was Slay Queening. Her, and she was still an evil hoe, but... It, I don't know, shout out to her, I guess. Now, Agrippina's grip on Claudius was so tight that she was even able to convince him to appoint her son Nero as his heir instead of his own son. But at some point, Claudius began to get cold feet about this decision. And when Agrippina saw this, she pulled another certified girl boss move and poison him. This broad's almost as crazy as my ex-wife, let me tell you. At the age of 16, Nero became emperor of Rome, and despite not holding any official power or titles, Agrippina still held a considerable amount of influence over the empire. After a while, Nero began to resent his mother for this, and decided that she had to go. Now, there are a lot of ways Nero could have chosen to assassinate his mother. He could have gone with the classic poisoning technique that seemed to work really well. He could have thrown her off a building and made it look like an accident. But no, instead he decided to take a page out of Wile E. Coyote's playbook and rigged her bed with a mechanism that would cause the ceiling to fall down on her when she lied down. Now, this stupidly overcomplicated plot would have worked, except for the fact that Agrippina used to have her slaves warm her bed for her before she got in it. So at the end of the day, a slave girl got crushed to death and she was unscathed. But if you think Nero was gonna let a setback like that hold him back, you don't know shit. So Dude, that's kind of, that's kind of genius. What the fuck? No. Rome really was on some different shit back then. Like, I mean, it didn't work, but also, Still, like, what a fucking insane way to assassinate somebody. Back then, all you had to do was just wait it out, you know? Motherfuckers are going to die anyway, right? Like, a slight cut would take a, a person out. Not like they had medicine technology. The fuck is happening? So immediately, he started drawing up his next plot. And he decided that his previous plan just wasn't complicated enough. So he would have to dial a stupid up to 10. He kept the collapsing ceiling part of his previous attempt, but this time, it would be on a boat. And the idea was that the boat would sink after the ceiling fell. Think about it. It was what? the perfect plan. If the ceiling <laughs> that dropped on her head didn't finish her off, then surely the boat sinking would. So Nero invited his mother to a party on a boat under the guise of making peace. Okay, at that point, like, you're not supposed to go to the party. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, my son, my 16-year-old son's trying to murder me who I may or may not have had sex with, apparently. I didn't, I don't know enough about Roman history. I probably shouldn't go to the party. Which she accepted. And at one point in the night, another mechanism was triggered to bring down the ceiling on top of her, but she escaped death yet again. The same can't be said for her servant, who was, again, crushed to death. Okay, man, working for this broad must have been the worst fucking job on the planet. Almost as bad as working at an Amazon warehouse. Almost. Anyways, after that plan failed, Nero's men decided to sink the boat themselves. Except they forgot one simple thing. Agrippina could swim. And they were <laughs> like 50 feet away from the shore, so she just casually swam away from danger. Then, after yet another colossal failure, Nero was fed up. He decided <laughs> to just do things old school and sent What's three it? of his goons to stab the shit out of his mom. See, you can't go wrong with the classic. It's hard to screw up a good stab. Yeah, I was about to say, that's like, that's what he should have done from the jump. Session. After her demise, Roman generals wrote letters to Nero congratulating him on finally whacking his mother. R.I.P. to one of the biggest girl bosses of all time. Hey, big dog. Okay, for this next one, don't expect me to pronounce a single one of these names correctly. Back in 2019, a Chinese real estate developer named Tan Yu Hui was being sued by one of his competitors, known as Wei, after the two briefly worked together on a project. Now, I've been in quite a few legal predicaments in my day, and in a situation like this, you basically have three choices. You can either settle out of court and lose a bunch of money, you can take part in a lengthy legal battle that could potentially take years and still end up losing you a butt ton of money by the end. Or the third option, whack the guy who's suing you. Tan decided he didn't want to lose all this time and money, so he was going to go with option number three. Much cheaper to get somebody whacked than to pay court fees. 
So he hired some guy off whatever the Chinese True. version of Craigslist is and paid him $300,000 to whack his former associate. The hitman accepted the money, but you know the Chinese love to outsource, so he found another guy to carry out the assassination for him <laughs> for half of what he was getting paid by Tan. Then that guy passed the job off to another guy who outsourced it to another Bro, this motherfucker Alibaba drop shipped his assassination, dude, to a bunch of motherfuckers who also did the same. Guy named Ling. And by this point, Ling was only set to receive about $14,000 to eliminate Wei. Thanks. <laughs> so he went up to the guy and was like, here's $7,000 if you kill yourself. <laughs> Hopefully this pyramid scheme of death ended with Ling, who I guess really needed the money, but he didn't want to kill somebody for a measly 14k. So he hatched up a scheme so absurdly stupid that it had to work. He met with Wei and tried to convince him to fake his own death. And surprisingly, Wei actually agreed to this plan. The two men staged some photos that made it look like Wei was a corpse, and then Wei left town. These photos made their way up the ladder of assassins until they finally reached Tan. Then I'm losing my mind. No. Everybody got paid. It all worked out. But after a few days, Wei realized that this was the real world. This wasn't fucking Better Call Saul. So he went to the police and all six men were arrested almost immediately. Tan, the guy who <laughs> orchestrated this cluster. Yo, what's up with Chinese prison court system where they just put you in your underwear on court? I feel like that's cruel and unusual punishment. Okay. What is happening there? They just make you fucking... They just make you go out in court in front of everybody and the judge in your fucking undies? The fuck received six years in prison, while Ling, the last guy down the chain, received just two years. And it's kind of funny because the sentences got lower and lower for each hitman that was subcontracted. But yeah, man, it just goes to show that you should never hire a Chinese hitman. But, you know, these guys were amateurs, so it's kind of understandable, I guess. You would never expect something like this, this level of wackiness from the US government, right? Oh! Let's go! Exploding cigar time! Dude! Exploding cigar time. Uh, failed, uh, failed assassination attempt by a, a woman who's supposed to... Who, who's supposed to kill him, but then falls in love with Fidel Castro time. Dude, there is so much. There is so... This is... This in and of itself could have been made into an entire video okay this in and of itself could have been made into an entire fucking video because the united states government tried to kill him how many times was it 300 or 600 someone said yeah someone someone said 300 but i think it was 600 over 600 failed assassination attempts Now, if you know anything about geopolitics, you know that the United States government hated the communist leader of Cuba, Fidel Castro. So much so that the CIA made over 600 attempts on his life. And as time went on, these plots kept getting more and more ridiculous. At one point, I'm pretty sure the CIA agents just had a competition to see who could whack this guy in the most asinine way possible. Let's go through some of the more ridiculous ones. In 1960, the CIA recruited a woman named Marita Lorenz, who oh, had previously this is the best. banged this is the best Castro, one. but had since become an anti-Castro revolutionary after a bad breakup. The plan Okay, not a revolutionary counter revolutionary just point that out be revolutionary if he's anti castro just saying okay it was for her to seduce castro and bang him again and while he was in a post coital coma she would slip poison pills into his water Except, the plan fell apart when she told Fidel everything about the plot and confessed her love for him. Now, the only thing Castro loved more than banging broads was scuba diving and collecting seashells. The CIA was aware of both of these hobbies, so they hatched up a scheme where they would poison one of his wetsuits, and if that didn't work, they would rig a seashell to explode in an area that he was known to <laughs> dive in. None of these plans worked, so they decided to go straight Looney Tunes with it and decided to put an explosive in one of his cigars. You know, it's funny to imagine some CIA guys just watching this on TV one night and then he goes to the office the next day like, guys, I think I finally figured it out. It was so simple the whole time. But yeah, man, apparently there was a total of 634 attempts on Fidel's life. And you gotta admire the guy's resilience. Like, yeah, he was an autocratic dictator, but he was also kind of a chat. Disagree with this man and his assessment. So I'll give him some credit. This also speaks to how incompetent the CIA was back then. Like, these mother suckers could have...
Listen, it's okay. We can agree to disagree. You know what I mean? Sent me in there with a six pack of Smirnoff ice and a Swiss army knife. I would have taken his ass out by lunch, but that life is behind me. Let's move on to our last topic. Now, you probably heard about the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand in history class if you paid attention. His death was kind of the catalyst which started World War I. But a lot of you may not know that the circumstances around this event are extremely goofy to the point where it's almost unbelievable. Like almost every Imagine getting paid a living wage in the 50s just to keep up keep coming up with insane CIA assassination plots. Brother, I hate to tell this to you, but they're still getting paid a living wage to come up with really silly, goofy assassination plots at the CIA. Not only that, but they recently also got additional platinum level health care from the federal government to the tune of $187,000 a year by cooking up the Havana syndrome bullshit. The guys, these people are not making, you know, they, they're making good money. They're not like the, the door busters, okay, uh, in, in, the, in the military. They're not like the rank and file military guys that are getting fucking different kinds of previously unseen kinds of like lung cancer due to toxic wastes being burned in the burn pits next to the forward operating base you know um the no havana syndrome is real remember when people were remember when people were fucking saying that to me god i have so many fucking awesome dubs against like state department propaganda and yet everybody always talks about the one fucking time i was wrong nobody remembers the top of the hour ad breaks that hit they only remember the one top of the hour ad break that misses. This one, of course, is not one of them because I debated the fuck out of you. But if you're not at the top of the hour, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Prime subscription a month. Yeah, no one remembers the Nord Stream one when I was so fucking on the money. Holy moly. <sighs> This is why I use my Twitch Prime on Tarek, not you. Why was Tarek not wrong about the uh, invasion of Ukraine? <laughs> You're talking on this guy's Brooklyn accent. I think a lot of people forget that I also spent a very long time in the East Coast. So when I hear somebody talk with like a New Jersey, New York accent, which is just Italian, okay, uh, immediately it comes back. It's like code switching for... Here's the minute break now, by the way. It's code switching. It's like... Um, like if you're from the south and you you talk to some southern people and then you start having southern twang do you wish you did not come from america what <laughs> what everything that could have gone wrong did but before we get into all that a quick refresher franz ferdinand was the heir to the throne of the austro-hungarian empire in 1908, the Austro-Hungarians annexed Bosnia, which really pissed off neighboring Serbia who wanted to take it for themselves. So the Serbian government, along with a paramilitary group known as the Black Hand, began funding and training a small- But those glorious hats, one of the worst things that's ever happened. So sad. Fez's falling out of fashion is sad. Small Bosnian revolutionary group- you Gotta bring it back. Bosnia. Who had one main objective free bosnia from those hungarian bastards step one was to assassinate archduke ferdinand step two well they didn't really think that far ahead but in 1914 they would get their chance to complete step one on june 28th the archduke and his wife sophie visited the bosnian capital of sarajevo to give a speech and open a state museum by this point, a total of seven conspirators were involved in the plot to take him off the census. Now, keep in mind, these assassins were extremely well-equipped and had prior knowledge to first... You hate to see Turks kill Turks, you know? Nobody talks about Turk-on-Turk -Turk violence. ...Ferdinand's itinerary, so they knew exactly where he was going to be going and what time he would arrive and what route he would take to his destinations. When Ferdinand and Sophie arrived, the Bosnian assassins were waiting for them along the street where the Archduke's motorcade was set to pass through. The first assassin to encounter the motorcade was a fellow by the name of Muhammad. Now, Muhammad had the perfect opportunity to toss a grenade at the Archduke's car, but he pussied out. Muhammad Mehmet Basik. <laughs> and didn't go through with it. The next person that would be within range was Vaso Kubrilovic, a 17-year-old student. Vaso was fully prepared to take out the Archduke. But when the time came, he also pussied out. 
Man, what's so hard about committing homicide against the world leader? That shit's easy. You know what's hard? Being sued by your ex-wife and having to pay her $50,000, which you don't have. So you're forced to make mediocre YouTube videos just so you can attempt to pay back the money you borrowed from a loan shark to pay back your ex-wife. That- There's no shot that this is a real story. Shit's hard. Uh, anyways, the first two guys fumbled their opportunity, and next up to bat was a gentleman named Nedelko Kabrinovich. Now, this dude was dying. Like, literally dying of tuberculosis on some Arthur Morgan shit. So, he had nothing to lose. So, when Ferdinand's core was within range, he didn't hesitate to toss a grenade directly at his core. But the thing is, he should have hesitated. See, the idiot forgot about the 10 second delay on the grenade. So, while he did manage to hit the Archduke's car spot on, the grenade bounced off of it and hit some other poor schmucks that got blown up instead. Luckily, from what I can tell, nobody passed away, but a bunch of people got injured and had to go to the hospital. After the explosion, Ferdinand's car sped off and the other assassins wouldn't get there. Damn, bro, surviving a fucking grenade explosion at that time? That's crazy. Turn. And it Kabrinovich was absolutely, completely, and utterly humiliated by his colossal fuck up. So he decided that instead of living with the embarrassment, he would end himself. So he swallowed a cyanide capsule and jumped in the nearby river. Except this guy was such a schlemiel that he couldn't even whack himself properly. The cyanide pill had expired and the river he jumped into was only like four feet deep. Police eventually caught up to him and he got beat up by an angry mob before getting thrown in prison. After that, the rest of the assassins decided to call it quits. Not only did they fail miserably, but they also injured innocent people and- Bro, he can't even kill himself, dude. This motherfucker can't kill nobody. Had to watch their friend humiliate himself. So yeah, pretty much everyone went home after that. Well, except for one guy. 17-year-old Gavrilo Princip. Princip, like Kabrinovich, was also suffering from a terminal tuberculosis and didn't have long to live. But he refused to die without first starting a global- These motherfuckers weren't the black hand, they were the black lung, dude. Everybody's got tuberculosis. Conflict ...that would lead to millions of deaths. Now, Gavrilo knew from his intel that the Archduke's next scheduled stop was at the museum that I mentioned earlier. So he decided to hit up a deli next to the museum because, you know, failed assassination plots work up an appetite. And he ordered himself a pastrami sandwich and waited for the Archduke to show up. But what he didn't know was that Ferdinand was no longer going to the museum. I mean, the guy almost got blown up, so why would he stick to the original plan? That, would, that wouldn't make any sense. Instead, the Archduke was now going to the hospital to visit victims of the explosion caused by the assassins. So he escaped death once again. Or he would have if it wasn't for the fact that nobody notified his driver about the change of course. So the driver, oblivious to the new plan, continued on the previously planned route to the museum. If they would have just updated the driver of the change of plans, then Gavrilo would have just been sitting at the deli with his thumb up his ass. At some point during the ride though, thankfully somebody realized their mistake and yelled at the driver to head to the hospital. So the motorcade stopped briefly to change course, and the place they stopped in front of was the freaking deli Gavrilo Princip was enjoying a delicious sandwich at. And when Gavrilo looked outside and saw the Archduke just a few feet in front of him, he couldn't believe his eyes. His jaw was on the floor, but he didn't have time to dwell on the moment. And if World War I was avoided, the Ottoman Empire would have remained. He had to take action. So he reached into his pants and grabbed his pistol and went up and popped Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie. And then World War I happened two weeks later after Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. All according to plan, baby. Well guys, that's about all we have. As you can see, I was not exaggerating when I told you these would be some goofy ass assassination attempts. But anyways, I hope you guys found some of this stuff interesting. Please let me know what you think in the comments. And guys, if you liked the video, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications Y'all would have had the Arab rebellion in peacetime regardless. I mean, there was a lot of conflict. Zon, <sighs> that would help me out a lot. Thank you. Also, guys, if you want to support my YouTube career, check out my. Where is the? <clears throat> you said the exit as well really? in the description of this video. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, video was Dantavius's dumbest assassination plots in history. Bro, this dude has absolute bangers. Like, actually.